Yes, class. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, class. So yesterday we had completed the series LCR circuit part and the resonance part. So resonance was over. So series LCR circuit was over yesterday. Now C class, two types of circuits are still left. These are very short circuits. Now understanding these circuits is very important, very easy. And questions from these circuits can also come. These include your resistor and a capacitor circuit, inductor and a resistor circuit. I'm having a bad throat, so it may happen that my voice may be very low. So just let me know whenever my voice is low. All right, so let's start with the LR circuit. See, LR circuit is what? L is your inductor. Inductor and resistor combined together. So it means in your complete series LCR circuit, one component is just deleted. In your series LCR circuit, whatever you have studied in the last class, yesterday, whatever you have studied, last class, last to last class for the calculation of impedance for all these values, everything will be same here. It's just that component of capacitor will not be there because this is simply LR circuit. So series LR circuit means inductor and a resistor both are connected in series. All right. So whatever component was there for capacitance, like capacitive reactance, voltage for a capacitance, this part gets cancelled. This is not present. So you only have a resistor and you only have an inductor. So for a resistor, we already know current and voltage both are in the same phases. There's no phase difference between them. And for inductor, inductor, in case of inductor, this voltage, voltage leads the current by 90 degree. Now we had one more component that was capacitor. So this will not be included in this circuit. So when once you will draw the phasor diagram or the graph, see your resistor will be fixed. No, if you draw it. Voltage across resistor is there. Now voltage across capacitor is present over here and voltage across inductor is present. Remember when we are doing series LCR circuit, this is what our phase diagram looks like. So here what will happen? Simply the component of capacitor will get removed. So this becomes your phasor diagram. Just I'm telling you, no, whatever you have studied is same for these two circuits that we are going to do. That's why we did LCR circuit prior to these two circuits. Now what will happen? Sa same steps you have to follow. Like we'll be calculating impedance. Let's, let's see impedance for this. Now see for calculation of impedance, the way you had drawn the Pythagoras theorem, we had applied Pythagoras theorem for the calculation of impedance. Look over here. Here, what did how did we write it for series LCR circuit? E naught square equal to VR square plus VL minus VC whole square or VC minus or VC minus VL whole square, depending upon the greater magnitude. Let's see, this is the case. So this component is not there. So what will be present? VR square plus VL square only. Now put the values of current. See here what will happen. Voltage is actually what? If you look at the circuits, let's say current is high in the circuit. So voltage across the resistor becomes current into resistance, right? Across this resistor. And voltage across the inductor becomes current into X. So same components, we'll be putting it into this circuit. So this becomes equal to I naught R squared plus I naught XL both square. Let's take I naught square common from here. If I take I naught square common from here, R square is left. And if I take I naught square common from here, XL square is left. So what is the value of I naught square? Let's bring this into the denominator on the left hand side. So this becomes E naught square divided by R square plus XL square. If we take, if we remove the root signs. Now see, easy impedance, compare it with the voltage. Ohm's law. 
if you compare it with ohm's law directly you can see whatever is coming in the denominator this is your resistance and the net resistance or impedance for this circuit now becomes what r square plus it was the xl minus xc whole square since xc square is not there this only becomes under root r square plus xl square this is what your impedance is there for the LR circuit. This is just for the LR circuit because C, that is your capacitance component is not present. This is how the circuit will be. This is will be the value of Z. And see, tan cos phi will remain the same everywhere. Cos phi will be R by Z only as we have seen. Cos phi remains the same. Tan phi will be what? Tan phi was XL minus XC by R. So it will be only XL by R. Tan phi was vl minus vc by r so it will be only vl by r like this easy i think it's better and easier than the lcr circuit because the calculation part will also be easier uh, we'll do question also on this just note this down any doubts you have clear yes ma'am okay
Note down this question. Take two minutes. Try it yourself. Impedance of the circuit and phase angle between voltage and the current. So resistor, resistance, voltage across the resistor is given as 90 volts and voltage across the inductor is given as 120 volts. IRMS for the whole circuit is 3 amperes. You have to find out Z, that is impedance and the phase angle. And those who... Whoever get their answer, send me in the chat room so that we can discuss it later on. Yes, class, any answer? Still now nobody has submitted any answer. Okay, then let's discuss it. Say voltage across the resistor is given as 90 volts and voltage across the inductor is given as 120 volts. So VRMS will be calculated by under root vr square plus vl square so under root vr square this is 90 square plus 120 square under root so once you solve this you will get it as 150 volt this is what this is vrms and what is irms irms is given to you as 3 amperes so irms is 3 amperes IRMS is equal to VRMS divided by Z. That's what we have been studying. So Z will be equal to what? Z will actually be equal to VRMS divided by IRMS. So this becomes 150 divided by 3. That gives 50. So this is the impedance of this and regarding the phase angle, see, this is what type of circuit? This is LR circuit. For LR circuit phase angle, you can easily calculate it using tan phi. For the second part, see tan phi. Tan phi will directly be equal to VL divided by VR. So what is VL given? VL is 120. 
and this is 9. So this becomes 4 by 3. Again, you get phi as tan inverse 4 by 3. All right, this is how you solve easily. Just solve these parts. Keep it easy and solve these parts like this only if you have these circuits with you. All right, note it down. Done class. Can we start with RC circuits now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, see, RC circuits, I've written everything already for RC circuits because now, see, understanding RC circuits is as similar as this. Here you had in the LCR circuit, the capacitor component got deleted. You didn't have C. That is the whole capacitors X, C, V, C. All these components were not there. Now, in case of the circuits that we'll do for RC, you will not be having L inductor component will be gone so voltage across this will be vr is equal to ir and vc will be i into x so everything that was coming as xl now gets replaced by xco in this circuit so everything will be the same it's just that whatever wherever you had xl now you'll be having x now see for the phasor diagram also for the LCR circuit, this was VR, this was VC, this was VL. Now what will happen? Now this component will not be present. So definitely you will be obtaining this only and the phase angle between them is 90 degree. That's why only you know, for VRM is in the last question also, we had calculated it as under root VR square plus VC square. Why did we calculate it like this? Because all these have and made, make angle of 90 degree with each other. Now see, similar, similar thing. The way it was VL present, no? Here we will be writing E naught square is equal to VR square plus VC square. Putting the values of VR and VC, this will not be, it's not, this becomes I naught square. 
this is i naught square xc from here this becomes the value of i naught square this is i naught square xc so if you take in the common root z value becomes under root r square plus xc square there we were getting under root r square plus xl square here you have under root r square plus xc square so we'll not be even doing any numerical on it because numericals are exactly based on what we have written it's just that a numerical value gets changed all right so these two circuits are there before you note this part down no just see what did we study among these circuits and how you have to revise it because the revision of ac is very important maximum students commit error in this ac and why do they commit error because they do not remember which quantity is leading which quantity by how much degree for example voltage leads current by 90 degree in case of inductor voltage lags by 90 degree in case of circuit having capacitor they are in the same phase in case of circuits having resistor so this if you do not remember other things become confusing because you have seen already in lcr circuit also what happened everything was based on this fact only which quantity is leading which quantity so initially we had seen three circuits these included were circuit having only resistor which we call purely resistive circuits then you had purely capacitive circuits capacitive or capacitive then you have purely inductive circuits these three we have done then a combination of all these circuits gave us lcr circuit these we have done and then we had the two more circuits which included rc circuit and rl circuit so combination of resistor was fixed and c and l differ and rest of the properties remain the same so like this you have to revise all of the circuits and you have to identify also in your exam questions will be there figures will be given for example if i draw a circuit like this you have to identify this is a capacitor this is a resistor this falls under this category so accordingly you have to identify and note this as well otherwise your question would have been a question of current electricity all right so revise in this manner identify it in this manner and i suggest you whenever you are revising write down the see because the circuits is the main part of ac chapter name is only alternating current so everything that is dependent on alternating current v2 power energy today right now if you know, after you note down this power energy v2 but more importantly you have to identify all these circuits then only application will become easier if you are able to identify then you can put in the formula if all these three are mentioned suppose you have a circuit like this then definitely lcr so you put it under this category likewise you have to identify and then remember and apply the formula then then class i'm telling you the then the chapter is nothing if you are able to identify all these which circuit is this and the rest of the details that were present associated with it like for example rc circuit you are able to identify this is rc circuit for rc circuit just now you have done the formula for impedance for tan phi class then the chapter has nothing in it this is the only part of the chapter that makes the student confused all right so just note it down and please revise it today tomorrow i think you will have yes yes uh, asta i think yes asta mam no, no, all these circuits are coming yes Because all I these think... circuits no no ah. these circuits are coming the rest of the some more circuits were there that have been deleted in your course for class 12 a uh, specifically see these two circuits no what we have done right now these are not so very important mostly important are these why these because this is the important one and for understanding this you have to identify all these three so these circuits are there there are some more circuits which involve complete integration and differentiation and all these circuits some more circuits are there that have been deleted till these these all sets of circuit how many are these six circuits six i guess yes so these are included okay asa yes ma'am anushka you were asking something 
Um, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I wanted to ask you that uh, today can I leave at six thirty because we have this Dhanteras puja and so because of yes, this. yes, yes. Oh, okay, six okay. thirty means how after how much? It's seven o'clock over here. Six thirty means you're in Dubai, no? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so one point five hours difference is there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, Anushka. Just, just text me once. Anybody else also ask her someone else. Just let me know if you all have to leave. No. Just let me know. Okay. okay, Anushka. Anushka, just text me once. Okay, when yes, it's six thirty at your place, let me know. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.
All right, now power and energy in an AC circuit. So one question can come from this. This is not so very important. One proof can we come among this? What all topics are important that I'll be mentioning? All right, this derivation I have not seen it coming in the years, but it can see it's a part of your syllabus. So any question can come. I'm just mentioning what all things are very important. What all things are not so very important. So this derivation is not so very important. This power derivation. But do not skip it whenever you're revising. Okay, so power is power is equal to V i or you can say E i. And now see, E i, E is what? E is E naught sine omega t, right? And i is what? If i is i naught sine omega t, some phase difference let's include over here. Phase difference will be there. We cannot take an ideal situation where there will not be any phase difference between voltage and current, right? We have to take some phase difference, phase angle by which the voltage leads the current. Let's say I have taken this condition. Even if you draw draw this and write this all derivation for a capacitor, where you want to write minus phi of this side, you can do the same thing. Why? Because see, this is in multiplication. When you will write the equation not together, this will be E naught I naught sine omega t multiplied by sine omega t minus phi. So whether this sine omega t minus phi was for because of current or EMF, this doesn't matter. In At the end, you have this only. For resistor, you cannot definitely take because for resistor, you already have this equation. And for resistor also, if you want to take just one thing will occur. Phi will become zero. So the rest of the things will be the same as it is mentioning. So this is P is equal to E naught I naught. Okay, let's do one thing here in the numerator and denominator. Let's multiply it by two. There won't be any difference. Two, two will get canceled. So you can multiply and divide it by two. Now see this identity that is formed. Two sine omega t. One identity will be formed. This can be written as, see, this is actually what identity. All the students who, who have mathematics, I think they'll be able to recognize this, but students who do not have mathematics, just learn this equation. Because when once if the question comes to de derive this, you have to mention why, which identity you are using. So identity is basically two sine A into sine B. This can be written as cos a minus b minus cos a plus this identity you have to remember those who do not remember now see if i write the same thing and apply and i apply this this is e naught i naught by two here see this will become what cos a minus b omega t minus omega t minus phi from here only phi will be left cos phi and minus cos in the second part, they are getting added. So omega t plus omega t will become 2 omega t minus 5. Right? Till here. Now see, if you take the average power dissipated of this, if you take the average of it, since we are we see what is happening, AC dynamo is there for AC generator only in the first class we had seen then the, that the coil keeps on rotating, angle keeps on changing. As the angle keeps on changing, you have different values of current. That's why we say it is alternating current, alternating EMF, because values of current and voltages are very even. Out of that, the maximum value is known as the peak value this we have studied so if you are calculating the power how will you calculate the power which value of emf and current will you take for calculation of emf right so we will take the average of this we have to take average power now for average power no remember whenever you have no second cosine term second cosine term means this this is known as second cosine term cos theta something related to cos 2 theta this is known as second cosine term so average of this second cosine term this is over a full cycle is zero 
second cosine terms average over a full cycle is zero. Now, how this term is zero? There is a full derivation in mathematics for this. In trigonometry lessons, students study it. So, all those who have mathematics, they'll be knowing it, how to do it. The averages of cos 2 theta, cos theta, sine half, sine minus half, all these derivations are there. Right now, for your physics level, you just have to remember this part. And you have to remember this identity, how this identity has arrived. That 2 sine is sine, we identity. Right, so if this whole term is zero, what are we left with? We are left with E naught, I naught by two. From here, we have only cos phi. Okay, class, tell me one thing. What is this? Root two into root two? Two. Two, right, Emmett. This is root two into root two is two only. So it means this two, I can write this two over here as... E naught, I naught by root 2 into root 2 only. There's no difference over here. Why? Because 2 can be written in this way. Now the purpose of writing this. Can anyone identify what is this? E naught by root 2. E naught by root 2. Something? Are you able to recall this? E naught by root 2. Um, I naught R. I mean, like, I naught is equal to epsilon naught by root 2 R. So. Uh, that was for resonant one, yes. That was specifically for resonant one. One more try. E naught by root 2. Try to remember what was this formula. Somewhere we have used this. Not somewhere. A lot of time we have used this. E naught by root 2. I naught by root 2. E naught by root 2 is the formula of? No idea. Um, is it impedance like Z? Uh, no, no. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. ERMS. What was the formula of ERMS? E naught by root 2. Formula of IRMS. I know by root 2. Did you recall, all of you? Nastha, Imad, and all. Yes, okay. So this is, so it means I can write E naught by root 2 as ERMS, I naught by root 2 as IRMS, and here I have cos phi. So this is the average power in an AC circuit. You will be getting average power. You will not be getting instantaneous power for this. You have average power formula only for this. All right, P is equal to ERMS, IRMS, cos phi. Now see, if you have a purely resistive circuit, phi is fixed, that current and voltage both have no phase difference between them. Phase angle is zero. So for purely resistive oh. circuit, uh, uh, someone is asking something. Emma, are you asking something? Okay. No one is asking. Uh, ERMS, IRMS, cos 0 degree instead of 5. So cos 0 is 1. This is ERMS multiplied by IRMS. Now see, for purely capacitive circuit or purely inductive circuit, you know the phase difference between the voltage and current will always be 90 degrees. Just the difference is here the voltage lags, here the voltage leads. Or you can say current leads and current lags. But the phase difference value or magnitude is 90 degree only. So if I write this ERMS, IRMS cos 90 degree, every term becomes zero. P average is zero. So can you notice one thing? In case of purely resistive circuit, this is having a maximum value. And in purely capacitive or inductive circuits, it is having a minimum value. And this question comes also prove that average power for this is zero. That we do because this question comes. But till here, is it clear? Average. So from 
Okay, so one more thing. In this no class, uh, theoretical question can also come. When is the maximum power? Where is the power set to be minimum? In which type of circuits? Now see, these conditions no, where average power is zero, the current that will be flowing in such circuit, that current you call it as wattless current. So wattless currents are what? These are alternating currents, which alternating current which is obtained when average power through AC circuit is zero. Whenever you will have average power as zero, that type of alternating current, you will have a special name for it, wattless current. One more thing, power factor is very important because these power factor and wattless current do mark it as important in your notes whenever you will copy it. No, mark these two as important. There are a lot of chances that these two can come in your exam this time. Power factor. And wattless current, definition of wattless current, power factor. These will not come for a lot of marks, but there are certain chances. So do revise it whenever you're going for the exam. Now see in the formula, ERMS, IRMS, cos phi. This term that was present, cos phi. This is only known as power factor. Just a special name given to cos phi, which is power factor. Just of the formula for cos phi, what you've studied R by Z and all these things, these are still the same. So whenever power factor in the circuit, like what is the power factor for a purely resistive circuit? So we know power factor is one. Power factor is unity. Why? Because cos phi is one. Don't go by phi. Phi is phase angle. If it is asked in your exam, what is the power factor for purely resistive circuit? Then do not write it as zero. Zero is phase angle. What is cos phi? Cos phi is cos zero, which is one. So cos phi is known as power factor. Fine. Uh, this we have to do. Proof for this. Proper integration is involved over here. But before that, no class noted till here. Then we'll do that. Noted from here.
Okay, class. Now, as I was saying, we have to do that proof. How the power average is zero. See this, we have discussed inductors, energies, half Li square and capacitor. We have discussed half CV square, half U square. I see. These are previous. This I've just written for your reminder. This is not needed here. Just in case of any of the question and if any of it, if you require it, just you can note it down. Otherwise, no need to do it. Just in your question, if it comes. Now see when we'll be doing revision, so we'll be combining all these. Now prove that power average associated. Let's take for a capacitor, let's take. Because for inductor, everything is same. It's just that in case of capacitor, we'll be writing A naught sine omega t. I will be writing it as I naught sine omega t also you can write or cos theta also you can write. We'll be writing omega t plus 90 degree pi by t. It's better if we write it as pi by t. Same thing if you're proving it for inductor. You just have to add pi by 2 over this side. Now comes the proof part. Now see class. Work done's formula is basically power is actually work done divided by time. Work done per unit time. So from here, work done, this is written as power multiplied by dt. See, power at time will get multiplied to get the work done. So to obtain the net work done for this, just put in all the values, power's values, you have it as vi, vi dt. So dw becomes vi or you can write ei dt. It's better if you use the term e. Because for voltage, we have been using E only here, EMF, not voltage, EI. Now let's put in the values, DW. Same thing, this becomes, or you can write this as you know, I naught cos omega T also, instead of writing this whole term all the time. Let's write it as cos only. So this becomes what? This becomes E naught sine omega T. And this part becomes I naught cos omega. Right, so dW becomes equal to, just multiply again, two above and below. You get E naught I naught by two. For this part which is left, you get sine omega t cos omega t, which can be written as sine two omega t d. Now we have to find out power. Average power will be equal to what? It will be the work done divided by the total time. So how will we get the total work done? Total work done will be simply integration of this. So we'll integrate this complete power and we'll be dividing it by time to obtain the average power. Now put in the value in this. One by T is there multiplied by this whole term, E naught, I naught by 2. This is GW. So this can be written as E naught, I naught by 2. And we'll integrate this because this was a constant term, so we have kept it out. Now you'll integrate sine 2 omega t dt from 0 to capital T because for full cycle we are calculating. So this becomes E naught I naught by two capital T from here. Now sine two omega T, you get cos two omega T. And since it is integration, the constant term that is two omega, it gets divided in the denominator. Limits are from zero to capital T. E naught I naught by two T is there. This becomes equal to what C? Uh, we can do one thing. Let's move this to omega also here. No need to keep it under the bracket because this is also a constant term. So by that, you will get 4t omega, right? These two terms have been multiplied. 2t into 2 omega. This gives 4t omega. That's what I've written. 
right? And also let's keep this minus sign with it. Now we just have to solve cos to omega t limits from zero to capital T. So cos to omega, omega let's write it as two pi by t and t's value upper limit is capital T minus cos zero degree. All this term will become zero. So see from here, there, this capital T, capital T gets cancelled minus E naught I naught by 40 omega cos 4 pi minus cos 0 degree minus E naught I naught by 40 omega cos 4 pi can be written as 1 minus cos 0 is also written as 1, 1 minus 1 gives 0, hence this 0 is proved. Fine. So note it down. One numerical we'll do. Last question for power and energy. So this comes as it is in your exam. Prove that the average power is zero. Or do the derivation. Derive the formula for average power for a purely capacitive circuit or purely inductive circuit. Accordingly, you just have to prove that this is zero. All right. Note it down. Wherever you get stuck, you're not able to understand. Let me know.
I'll stop here today, class. Do one thing. Just take the screenshot of this question and try it. So on next Saturday with this question and transformers, we'll complete with this lesson. And on Sunday, you have a test of AC, subjective test of alternating current. So as you'll complete till here, just take the screenshot or you can note it down. Text me done and you all can leave. Okay then. Thank you so much, class. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you.